Hi, welcome to My Quilting Beehive. This month in My Quilting Beehive, I am going to show you how to take your strip sets that you pieced in June in The Marvelous Mystery and cut them and turn them into this dazzling diamond block that we're going to make. You're going to be cutting strips out of your strip sets and then we'll be using them to put them together to make the, the diamond unit. It looks difficult, but it's really not. Take your time, watch the video and think about it and you'll see that it's, it's actually very easy and, and it's gonna go really well. When you are working, you have strip sets you've made and they offset on the left end. So I'm gonna have my cameraman come over here in a minute and I'm gonna let you work so you can see it from the direction it's going to be done in. Make sure when you're pulling out your strip sets, you keep them in the correct orientation that they are from where you pieced them. So this is strip set D. Strip set D has fabric one at the top. Strip set C has fabric six at the top. And strip set C has fabric five at the top. And the one I already cut was strip set A. So we're gonna make sure to cut those up and keep them in the right direction. We're going to cut strip set B. I have fabric five, four, three, and then one made up strip set B. And I'm gonna use my diamond dimensions ruler from Creative Grids to cut my strip set into the wedges that we need. When you are ready to cut your pieces, you're going to lay your ruler on top and you, you can see usually this is the correct direction with the words facing the right way. You're gonna spin it around so the angle is the same as your offset that you made and have it kind of upside down. Take your time when lining it up. The line, it's actually between six and six and a half. There's a white line is gonna go by the first one and up here, the line between two and two and a half, there's a white line that kind of follows my seam between them. And you can nudge the fabric if it needs to be nudged just a little. And this one's the line between four and four and a half, the quarter, the white line, the quarter, four and a quarter. So I can line those up very carefully. Then you're gonna cut your first cut. And we offset these so we wouldn't have a lot of waste on the bottom and we could get the most pieces out of them. So we're gonna make our first cut along that side to trim off and make a straight edge for working. And I'm making sure my hand's holding that ruler secure so it doesn't slip. And those pieces will come right off the end. Then you're going to take your ruler and you're gonna turn it around and slide down a little bit so I have more table. And you're going to cut your pieces to two and a half inches. So on the bottom of the ruler, my numbers are white. We have one, two, and then two and a half right here. The line coming up from it is a dotted line and it's a black line. So I'm gonna put that along the edge of my fabric all the way up to make my two and a half inch diamond. And I'll have four diamonds. And again, that line is gonna line up. It's two and a quarter, four and a quarter, six and a quarter, where each seam will line up with your ruler. Take your time. Make sure it fits in there. If you pieced carefully last month when you put your strip set together, they will be exactly the right size. So now I'm gonna carefully cut. And, oops, missed one thread. That always happens, one thread. There we go. And I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then I'm gonna move my ruler and find another two and a half inch piece. Take your time, make sure those lines, two and a quarter, four and a quarter, six and a quarter, line up with your seam lines so it's straight and even. And then cut that one. I love how the Creative Grid Ruler has the grip on it so it doesn't slip and slide, especially on these pieces you don't wanna have mistakes on. You wanna keep them nice and straight. My two and a half inch line going down the seam. And you can nudge your fabric just a little bit to make all those lines line up. My two and a quarter, four and a quarter, six and a quarter inch line lining up. 
if you find it's getting a little wonky, you can start with a new fresh cut. I'm gonna take that one out of the way. If you need to square it up again, you can always turn your ruler around and take a new cut this way if it's if it's getting off, off kilter a little bit. So continue. If you're making the queen size quilt, you're going to cut eight of these. If you're making the king size quilt, you need 12. And the king size quilt, you can get 11 out of your first strip set. And then we made the little mini strip set to cut your second one. Once you have all your pieces cut from strip set A, B, C, and D, you're gonna take one from each set. So this is my A, this is my B, this is my C, and this is my D. Now we're going to put them together to make our block. And our block is actually backwards because D goes first. So we're gonna go D and then C. And if you look, you're gonna shift it a little bit like that and then B and then A. So when you put them together, they line up kind of like this. It's kind of elongated because there's no seam allowances yet, but they're gonna look like this. You can, the picture on the illustration has them this direction to make your diamond. So we're gonna sew these two together and these two together. A little tip to help you match the points. Don't be intimidated. It looks like it's hard, but you can do it. It's, it's not as bad as it looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this first one. This one's gonna flip it over to go onto here. So I'm gonna take it and on the side that my seam is gonna go, I'm gonna lay my ruler and I'm gonna, I have my quarter inch line along the edge, along the edge of my strip. And I'm just gonna put a little mark so I know where a quarter inch is, a quarter inch at each intersection. So I just made a little mark at each intersection. And then, when I lay it on top of here, I have those marks that will help me know where to put my pins. So if you look very closely here, my pin is gonna go where my line is and where the seam. So it's across between the seam line and that little mark that I made a quarter inch down. I'm gonna put my pin in there and then it's gonna go into the quarter inch from the next one so it lines up. So the two seams actually make a little V in there and my point is going so that the two in my fabric, it's the purple fabric, is touching itself. So that's where they're gonna nest, right there. If it helps you to mark, you can mark the other fabric too, but I find just one pin, uh, one mark is enough for me. And I just put my pin in that one and I know the next one below it is gonna be a quarter inch. Make sure the pin is right close you can see right there, it's right by where the green fabric is on that level. And I pull it right in, pull it tight so they're right where I want them to be. And then I pin the pin in. And one more here. Put my pin where the mark is. And I want the pin in just in the purple side, not into the second fabric. There we go. And into this one, those seams should line up on the end, just like that, pull it tight so they're right where they wanna be, and then you can just switch the pin around. We don't need to use the three pin method here because we're not matching points in the same way as some of our other blocks that we've done. The one pin will hold it where you need it. And now you're just gonna use an accurate quarter inch seam to sew it. Now you'll notice the tip of your, trying, or your diamond extends past the one below it, and on here, the bottom one extends past the top one, and that's because of the points. And it should be about a quarter of an inch from where the, tab, the dog ear sticks out. That, that's a dog ear that we'll be cutting off later. So now that I have it all pinned and ready, I'm gonna bring it to my sewing machine. Make sure you use an accurate quarter inch seam so your block will be the right size when you're done. And you're just gonna sew along that edge right down. If your seam allowance is sticking up a little, I'm just gonna use my point of this to make sure it stays flat. It's getting caught. And don't hit the pin right before it gets to the pin. Pull the pin out. Leave the pin in until you get to it as close as you can without hitting it. And so along there.
Now these are all cut on a biased edge. Diamonds and triangles will do that to you. Make sure you're not pulling. Make sure you're letting the machine feed it through and you're not fighting back against it so that it doesn't get stretched out of shape. Some people use starch. I'm not a starcher, so I did not starch my fabric. I just sewed right through and made sure not to tug and pull on it. Once you have that one sewed, I'm gonna set that one aside and I'm gonna sew the next two together. Just like the other one, whichever one's gonna be on top is the one you wanna mark. Take your ruler, place it so the quarter inch line is along the edge of your fabric and I'm gonna just mark where the intersections are so I know where my quarter inch is. And then you're gonna place it back up there. You can tell it's the right way because the same colors are gonna be next to each other. And it's gonna go right there. Just like before, I'm putting a pin in right where the mark I made was. So it goes in and then a quarter inch down on this one. So the two seams will line up. Pull it tight so they're right where they need to be, and then you can flip the pin to hold them in place. Then you do your next one. A quarter inch down. Pull them tight and flip the pin. The first one will be the hardest, and then each one after that will get a little easier. And by the time you get to the eighth one, these are going to be like a piece of cake. You're going to say it's no problem at all because you'll have it. Take your time. Careful pinning will save you time from ripping later. Get those pins in there and hold it right where you want it to be. And then flip it around. Again, you'll notice the dog ear on each end sticks out past the other piece and that's where it should be. So that dog ear, when I put my foot in here, let me put my needle down. When my needle's down, that dog ear right there is gonna go right to where the needle is. That's where I start sewing. Take your time. When you get close to the needle, be sure to pull it out. Avoid any pulling, pushing, stretching. Let the machine feed it evenly. You can see that stitch line ended right where that dog ear it was as well. So that's how you know you have your quarter inch all the way along there. Okay, I'm going to take these to ironing board and we'll see how I did. Once you have them pieced, bring them over to your ironing board. Set your seams. Don't move your iron on them because that'll stretch them. You just want to press across the seam. That's a little more important on bias edges to take your time and press the seam. Now we are going to press these seams open. If you want to peek, you can look at your points, make sure they are nice and lined up the way you want them. Because I'm pressing the seams open, I'll be pressing from the back. And I'm just going to start at one end and finger press them open to get it started. And then press my iron down, finger press, and don't slide your iron. I'm lifting up a little bit when I move it to the next place so the iron doesn't stretch the fabric. Take your time. Give it plenty of heat. I like a little steam. Like that. And then when you flip them over, make sure that you haven't gotten any tucks or folds in there. And you can press it from the front as well. Then you'll do your second one. Use your fingers to get that seam open.
work your way across the seam. And then you can look at the other side, make sure it's all flat and get it in place. Okay. They're actually turned around. There we go. No, there we go. It's like a puzzle figuring out where they go. So they'll be lined up. Your colors go across from each other. And now we're ready just to do the last seam. So we'll bring it back to the sewing machine, put three pins in, and we'll be done. If you need to rip out one of these, they are all on the bias. So I just wanted to show you how to do the ripping out so you don't stretch your fabric. You're going to use your seam ripper and you're going to cut your stitches about every fifth stitch or so. So it's about every, you know, quarter inch, a third of an inch or so. You're just going to rip by getting your seam ripper in and cutting that seam along the way on one side. This way, you're not damaging the fabric, you're not stretching the fabric, you're just putting the seam ripper in to cut those little stitches. And this is especially important on blocks that have a biased edge because you, you know what? We all have to rip sometimes. And so if you are careful, you won't stretch these out and you'll be able to reuse the pieces. So you want to make sure to rip it out in a safe way that won't stretch or twist or damage your pieces, just like that. Then you flip it over to the other side, and if you put your seam ripper under there, you should be able to get a grab on here, and you'll be able to pull that whole thread, careful not to stretch your fabric. And that back thread will come out in one piece, and then you can pull these apart, and you can clean them up, if you have a seam ripper, some of them have that nice eraser edge on them. You can use that, or you can just pull out these threads out of your way. And your two pieces haven't been damaged at all, and you can fix any problems you have. When you get back to your machine, make sure you have it laid out as it is in the picture. I have fabric one at one end and fabric two at the other end, so it makes the, the diamond. And I'm going to flip this one on top, so this is the one I will mark my quarter inch marks on. So lay your ruler. Good little reminder, refresher, review how to do these. Mark each seam quarter inch so you know where to put the pin. And then take your time, make sure they're right sides together, make sure they're in the right position. Line it up and then you'll do your pinning. So my pin's going to go where that mark was, right into next to my thread line. And then a quarter inch down on this one. Pull them tight. The seam should line up on the edge. We're going to into the marked line by the seam. And your pin, when it comes through, should be right next to the fabric. The seam allowance is going that way, and it's, so it's right next to that fabric. And then bring it down, quarter inch on the other one. Pull it tight. And then your last one. Once it's pinned, you're going to bring it to, into under your needle. Make sure that seam's lined up. Edges of the fabric. Accurate quarter inch seam. Someone had asked me how I get my pins so far under there. If your pins are really thick and they don't go under your foot, consider getting thin pins. These are glass head silk pins. 
they're fine. They're long enough, but they're a thin pin, which helps them to go under close to my needle. They do go under the foot. Um, some presser feet will have an adjustment setting as well. If they're pressing down too tight and your needle doesn't fit, you can adjust that in some machines, depending on what kind of machine you have, you might be able to adjust the pressure of that. Okay. And then once you have those all together, check them and bring them over to your iron to press your last seam. At your ironing board, set your last seam. Then you can open it up. Use your fingers to get those seams separated and started. We are pressing these open so there won't be bulk when we join them together. It will help later. And we'll just take our time. And very important to press and not iron. You don't want to rub it around. You just want to make that seam flat like that. And then you can fold it over, check it from the front side. And just give it one last hit. And there we go. There's one. If you're making the queen, you need eight of these. King, you need 12 of these. Thank you for joining me today.